Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, Lancaster Farmland Trust webinar series. Uh, for those of you who are, who are new, who have not attended any of our webinars in the past, welcome. For those of you who are returning, we're, we're happy that we can continue to keep you engaged with the, uh, the topics that we are presenting. Uh, I'm Jeff Swinehart, Chief Operating Officer at Lancaster Farmland Trust. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Lancaster Farmland Trust, we are a private nonprofit land trust working primarily in Lancaster County, uh, preserving uh, and stewarding the beautiful productive farmland of Lancaster County. Uh, to date, we have preserved 516 farms over 31,000 acres uh, and spend a, a lot of our time uh, working with farmers on their management practices to improve the environmental performance of their farm while simultaneously also improving the economic performance of their farm. Uh, we're really happy and excited um, to have um, a group of students with us at Garden Spot High School uh, for today's session. Um, this webinar will be on um, rabbit care management uh, and, and a second one on growing plants indoors. Um, if you do have questions uh, throughout, please feel free to populate those in the chat box, which we will then administer. And if you do have sound issues, audio issues in terms of hearing the presenters, because there will be a few different presenters, please note that in the chat box and then we can convey that uh, to the presenters so that they can speak up so that everyone can, can hear clearly. Um, you can find the full recording of this webinar on our YouTube page. Uh, there will also be links to this webinar and past webinars uh, on our uh, website as well. Uh, so with that, I would like to introduce uh, Abigail O'Neill, who is a senior at Garden Spot High School and is also the president of the Grassland uh, FFA. Um, the FFA program, there's you know, many numerous chapters uh, in school districts in Lancaster County, really growing our leaders of tomorrow, uh, those with an interest in agriculture. And, and I know from our organization standpoint, we're happy to uh, be able to present this, to provide them an, the opportunity to uh, present on uh, things that they are learning uh, and also cultivating their leadership skills. Um, it's great to have you know, these young minds uh, in our community um, and becoming our leaders of tomorrow. So with that, Abigail, I will pass it over to you. Thank you so much. Can everybody hear me okay? All right, so if you have any hearing problems so far throughout this event, please drop it in the chat and we will fix our volume for you. As we go through today, there will be a few bells going on. That's just because it's our lunch period. So we will have some switching of classes, but other than that, we will just keep moving through. Um, today, we will be talking about animal management specific. Oh, specifically in rabbits. And then we will be going on to talk about plant science and our tower gardens. So today we're going to start with our animal care and I'm going to hand it over to my fellow teammate, Brianna and a chapter member, Beverly, to talk about our bunnies. Hi, I'm Brianna Buck and I'm a senior at Garden Spot High School. Hi, I'm Beverly Schutte and I'm a junior at Garden Spot High School. Uh, as Abby already said, we're talking about animal care and management, mainly rabbits. And we have two with us today. We have Chewy, which Bev is going to bring up. And then this is Shroot that I'm holding. Um, this is a short-haired rabbit, and Bev has some long-haired rabbit. We chose to have two because both of them have very different necessities when it comes to caring. Like for Chewy, we have to brush him a lot because he has like a kind of like a mane up here, kind of like a lion. And we look for fecal buildup because that can lead to infections. And if they get an infection, then they have to go to the vet. Uh, today we're going to be leading you through how to groom the rabbits and setting up a cage, which we have in the back. When it comes to grooming, uh, just brush them from the top down. Um, and you want to use different brushes depending on the hair length of the rabbit. Okay. 
Um, along with that, we also look at their nails to make sure they're not getting too long because if they get too long, that could be bad for whoever's holding them. So one of our restraining techniques that we learned from Ms. Pearson is we take our non-dominant hand and loop it through to like under their front toes. And then we take our dominant hand and put them under their back. And then we pull them up so it's easier to access the claws and see if they need to cut or not. And you wanna make sure you don't cut it too far because they have a vein in their claws that if you cut too far into it, it can cause them to bleed. And that's not fun. The same thing with long hair. Um, when it comes to the cages in general, ours is back here. We put sawdust in the bottom so that when they go through the bee, it just goes through on the sawdust. And we put water here already. We try to put fresh water in every day. And like on Mondays and Fridays, we go through and we like deep clean the cages. And this is our food container. We fill it up and then we tap the back because there's like a dust buildup in it. And we put a nesting box, which is a wooden thing. And so they can one lay their babies in it and two in the winter. It's nice for them to go and they can hide in it. I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like some chew marks and some blow marks around the wood, which is because they like to chew on it and play on it as well as the hay and straw. Um, and then we have this thing right here for when we clean out the bottom of their head, we um, scrape it out and scrape out all of the sawdust and then replace it with fresh. And when we give them food, we give them dry food. We give them dry food. I don't know if they're, she's gonna, he's gonna eat it. Uh, um, so here is a bag of some hay that we use. Um, So, um, here is straw and here is the hay. Um, the straw goes in the cage during the winter because it helps keep their paws warm and it's cold in the winter. And the hay we put in in the summer because it helps like prevent the fecal buildup, which as I already said, if they sit in like the fecal buildup for an extended period of time, it could lead to infections, which would not be good. And then you'd have to take to the vent. As well as that, uh, some of them actually at our school are companion animals and emotional support animals, which is nice. And also here in our department, we have a breeding program where our small animal and management class 
we'll pick two animals, two of our rabbits at which they want to breed. And Shrew here is one of the ones that we have bred in our program. Uh, I don't know if you guys could see, but Shrew was rubbing his, like the underneath of his chin against the wooden box. That's just so he can get his scent on it because there's like a lot of different scents going around the room as well as this came from outside. So there's a lot of other rabbit scents out there. And it was, it, he's doing it right now. He's creating his like dominance. He's like claiming this as his right now, which is what they do to like water bottles when we bring them into the room. They will basically do it to anything. So when, so when we put the cages together, we already, did we put sawdust in the bottom? We put the hay in the straw in. We can put both of them in today because um, the straw goes in, like I said, in the winter to help keep their paws warm, and they like chewing on the hay a lot. Like
yeah, dried bananas, unsweetened. We're good. And uh, one of the other toys that we will sometimes put in for them is a block of wood so that they can store. Yeah, which is, as I said earlier, with the chew marks on the uh, nesting box, they've been chewing on that because we took that out of one of our previous rabbit cages, which the rabbit actually got adopted by a student at Garden Spot High School. Okay, well, that's all we have today for the rabbit care and management. Uh, we want to thank you again for your time today. We really appreciate it and have a great day and have fun learning about the plant. All right, so we hope you learned a lot about our bunnies here that we have at Garden Spot High School. To further elaborate on our projects here at Garden Spot, I'm going to introduce my advisor, Miss Pearson, who has ran the rabbit shed for the past few years now and has really made it for us. So now to Miss Pearson. Hello, everybody. My name is Mrs. Pearson. I teach everything and uh, anything animal here at Garden Spot High School. I started about six years ago. Um, I'm very excited to be with you here uh, today. Uh, just to elaborate on some of the things that we do with the rabbit shed, we have a breeding program currently. Um, what we do is we learn about genetics and reproduction and animal science. And we just actually have a new uh, course that was introduced this year called Small Animal Management and Care. So we uh, not only do we understand about the health and care from the vet science aspect of it, but we also learn about the industry and the genetics aspect of it uh, from the animal science class. Uh, small animal management and care actually takes care of grooming. They take care of uh, feeding and making sure that uh, all animal welfare laws are being uh, followed. Um, one of the other things that we also do is every Friday, we have what's called a fuzzy Friday where each student has the ability to take their rabbit inside. We socialize with the animals and a lot of our animals are actually, a lot of our rabbits, excuse me, actually act like dogs sometimes. Um, we learn about different behaviors and we, uh, during the summer we have a give these students the opportunity, even give community members the opportunity to, um, we even give uh, many of our students and community members opportunities to adopt the rabbits or foster the rabbits. Um, it's a great opportunity for these people to figure out if this is something that they're able to to take care of themselves, or it's a great opportunity to understand if this is the kind of industry that they're able to get into. Um, I understand that manure management uh, and utilizing rabbit manure is um, something that a lot of our students are actually trying to get into at this point, and it's a, it's a great opportunity for them to, to experience um, the small animal care side of it and also the industry aspect of it. Um, I'm gonna stop right there and I'm actually gonna bring it back to Abigail O'Neill. If you have any questions, please enter it in the chat box and we'll try our very best and to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you so much. All right, that's all we have for our rabbit care today. Now we're going to move into the plant science spectrum. So today we have our vice president, Andrew Horst, our secretary, Allison Zimmerman, and our chaplain, Cheyenne Martin, to talk to you more about plants and the grow lights that we have here at Garden Spot High School. Now I'm gonna turn it over to them. Hello, I'm Andrew Horst, the vice president of our chapter. Hi, I'm Ali Zerman. Um, I'm the secretary of Grassland FFA. Hi, I'm Cheyenne Martin, the chaplain of Grassland FFA. So we'll be talking to you about um, growing plants at your house. Uh, so to start off, we're going to talk about what plants need to grow. So if you ever would get a plant from like the greenhouse and um, ever look in the soil, there's obviously the black stuff, which would be the main part of the soil. And then there's these white pebbles. You can't really see them, but if you would look in a pot, you would see white pebbles. Um, that is called perlite. It helps to... Um, aerate the soil and give more structure to the 
of soil so that way the roots from the plants can um, have stuff to grow around. Um, there's also, there's other things you can use um, to grow plants in. Uh, we'll be talking about rock pool later, which is for hydroponic systems, which you can see uh, behind me here. Um, in addition to that, we also use what's called vermiculite uh, that uh, you put in, in the rock pool to help give the seed something uh, to germinate around. Um, so in a hydroponic system, you have to add nutrients into the water so that way um, if the plants have stuff to grow off of because it can't only use the water. Um, so it also needs light. Um, you can see here that we have lights on the towers uh, so that way we can grow them indoors. Uh, obviously, if you grow plants outdoors, uh, the sun would be the light. Um, you also have to make sure that your plants are watered um, constantly so that way they have uh, moisture in them. Yeah. All right, so now I'm going to be talking about urban gardening, which is pretty much growing in smaller spaces um, like cities and other areas. So this is an example of our urban gardening um, at Garden Spot since we can't grow in fields, we grow inside. Um, we also have a small hydroponic system here, which we'll be later building for you. And um, I'm now going to let Cheyenne show you some stats about urban gardening. Okay, so you can see pictures of examples of urban gardening. So, urban gardens take up less room than traditional gardens would. Um, you can have vertical buildings. Um, An example of this in this picture, as you can see here, um, they make um, boxes and then they plant the soil, and then you can have raised beds, which is very popular now, um, just to uh, limit the soil space, um, but still get the high crop yield in the city. Um, over here, there's multiple cities are building uh, other parks. Um, for gardening, just to create better crop yield and create um, a space where our crops can flourish and an urban environment. Uh, so now we'll be talking about the tower garden. So we have five of these at our school uh, that we uh, use in our classes. Um, so basically what's going on is there is water in the bottom. Uh, you can't really see it, the table's in the way. Um, but there's a pump that sits in the bottom and it sits in the water and pumps the water up, up the tower into the top and then it trickles down over the roots which are growing inside of the, the tower. Um, the roots Take in the water, which also has nutrients in, um, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, you can see the lights on it. They are on a timer uh, to uh, make sure that in the evening uh, the plants get a rest um, from the lights so that way it doesn't stress the plants. Um, there's also a timer on the pump uh, that um, the, the timer on the pump helps. Uh, to regulate how much water the plants get. Uh, it runs 15 minutes uh, every hour. Um, if you can't really see it in the video, but there is little plants uh, in rock pool uh, planted in uh, the tower. Um, we also have to control the pH uh, in the tower. Uh, we have pH down and pH up. Um, 
So we add, we check the pH with our uh, pH testing kit, and then uh, when you test it, if it's too high, then you add uh, whichever one you need to put in, and then yeah. So here is a rock pool that has a plant in it. Um, this one has a plant and this one does not. Uh, we'll be using some of the um, plants that don't have it to um, uh, make a, show you how to make a hydroponic system at your house. Yeah. All right, so we'll be teaching you how to make a hydroponic system at your house. Um, First, you'll need a styrofoam, a uh, sheet of styrofoam. And we already pre-cut um, holes in our styrofoam, but you'll just take an X-Acto knife and cut um, circles in the styrofoam that are sized, that are sized to our net pots. Um, net pots can come in multiple different sizes. We have our smaller size, which we'll be using for today, and then our bigger size, which can be used in bigger hydroponic systems. Okay, so you're going to need your nutrients. So we have hydro grow nutrients. You're going to need 18 grams of that and put warm water into a jar. You can get these nutrients at Crop King or um, any other area that sells um, nutrients that you can eat, like a greenhouse center or online. Now you'll shake up your nutrients. And the other nutrients we're going to be using is calcium and nitrate. Each nutrient has a job to do in the system. Um, so if a system is lacking in some nutrient, you could add more of the other nutrient to keep up for um, higher plant yield and um, create a better plant system. Okay, so once it's all shaken up, you're going to dump it into a bin of water. Make sure to leave room that the thumb can fit on top of the water. All right, and then you're going to take your styrofoam and put your net pods in them, which Diane will demonstrate. And then you're going to take your um, pre-soaked rock wool. We soak this for 20 minutes. And then you're going to put the rock wool inside the net pot. what they look like so far. All right. Next we're going to need a vermiculite, so just take a pinch of this to fill in the holes that are in the rock wall. You can also make a bigger system at your home just depending on the size of your box. Um, we're just making a six hole one because our box is only 12 by 6 maybe. All right, and then we're gonna add some seeds in there next to the rubiculite. We're growing lettuce, a common one. 
You can also grow tomatoes or any leafy greens um, or strawberries in the tar garden. All right, and now we're going to place um, our styrofoam with the uh, plants in, and then you're going to cover the seed up with ferment plant. Here's what they will look like when we just planted after probably two weeks. And then they'll grow into a head of lettuce in about eight weeks. Make sure if you have it outside, you have it in a well lit area or have grow lights. And then we made a label which says good lettuce to go with it. Make sure to label um, your plant that you're using so that you know what plant goes with what. Um, you can grow different ones. And you can grow lettuce and tomato because sometimes we're going to plant it. You can grow lettuce and tomato in the same system. All right, and now we're going to go back to Andrew. Okay, going back to the tower gardens, um, some things uh, that you should know. Um, you can grow pretty much anything in these tower gardens. Um, Certain plants take longer than others. Uh, for example, uh, lettuce uh, grows really fast and uh, you get a high yield off of it. Uh, but some things like zucchini or um, broccoli and that type of stuff uh, takes a lot longer to grow, um, but you can still you can still do it in the tower gardens. Um, so when you're planting your tower garden, you want to put um, tall plants at the top vining plants at the bottom and any like leafy greens and shorter plants in the middle. Um, you put the vine, vining plants at the bottom uh, because we also have cages you can put around this um, that they can grow up. Um, if you put them at the top then it would grow down and it would block out um, the other, other plants. Um, and you want to put your tall plants on the top so that way they grow up and away from uh, the rest of the plants in the tower garden. Um, your lettuces go in the middle just because they're shorter and take up less room so that way they're not trotting out any of the other plants. Um, so when you have a zucchini or any other flowering plant, um, you need to have, you need to pollinate them because we don't have any natural pollinators like bees or other insects or yeah, other, other animals. Um, so some things we use to do that is either a paintbrush or a Q-tip. Um, so you would take, you find a flower, a female flower and a male flower, and you um, you brush the male flower and then brush it onto the female flower, uh, and then that pollinates the plant, and then you'd be able to get uh, stuff off of that. Um, so for the pH. Uh, how you test it is you have your little container. And you, you fill it with the five milliliters of water. And then you take your um, bottle of pH um, test and you put in five drops of the test. And five drops of the test. Um, you can see it, the water's already changing colors. So you can you, you put it back on, the lid back on, and shake it up so the solution gets in there. And then you look at your um, your chart and you Find out, or you match the color uh, with the chart and see to see what the pH is. Um, this one looks like it was right around eight. Um, so you can do this um, 
to any water source, uh, you can do it in your creeks to see what the pH of your streams are, um, see if they're healthy or not. Um, you could do this with your tap water um, or pretty much anything. Um, Uh, so for the tower gardens, your the pH should be between 6.5 and 5.5. Uh, so this one is a little bit high, um, but that's where we would use our pH up and down uh, to get the pH to the level we want it to, so that way the plants can grow um, the way they need to. Um, uh, so once you would get your tower gardens. Uh, you need to set up the timers to make sure that the lights um, turn off in the evening um, and uh, so that way the water runs um, every 15 minutes or, or 15 minutes every hour. Um, okay, so now we're going to uh, move over to to propagating propagating plants with uh, Cheyenne and Allison. All right, we're going to show you how to propagate succulents. Um, so first, we're going to show you our dry soil. That um, you need to mix it with water first to create the best soil for growing in. Um, so I'm going to show you what this looks like. As you can see, it's pretty dry. And then I'm going to show you the wet soil, which is going to be in your plant. Here's what the wet soil looks like. As you can see, it's smaller clumps, better for growing in. Um, the pure light is leveled out. All right. So what we're gonna do is just we're gonna put some of the plants off so we can create a bigger plant for the future time. Here's what this one looks like. So you can see here. All right, and then it seems to be growing um, uh, which may be um, pretty and then it could be your um, flower for a later time. Right now, Cheyenne is dipping the root um, and the small succulent into the rooting. And then we're going to put it in the uh, wet dirt. We can put it out um, other sort of other um, It's an example of one that we've been growing. And this is a small one. As you can see, this one's a lot bigger and it was propagated a while ago. And then this is a common one um, that you will see um, in many greenhouses. And, um, it's an aloe plant, so it's pretty popular. Okay, so another propagation method is by leaf. So you're going to take your succulent and just pull the leaf off at the bottom. Like it'll look like this. So then you're going to get that and then lay it on top of your soil. 
We also have the liquid liquid growing corn, and we have the powder growing corn, which you can use both of them um, for different uses. And then place it into your soil. There are our recycling accommodations that we did. All right. As you can see, they're all different. Um, there is multiple different ways you can do it, but they all reach the end goal of creating a bigger plant. Um, going from something like this to something uh, like this. All right. Um, we're going to turn it off to Andrew. Okay, so uh, in our greenhouse, um, one of our classes um, grows poinsettias as a project. Um, so here we have uh, four of them. Um, so uh, most people uh, think that the color in the poinsettias is a uh, petal, uh, like a flower petal, but it is actually called a brack. Um, that's because the color uh, is coming from the bottom of the plant and pushing up into the leaves. So the actual, the thing that actually turns a different color is uh, the leaves themselves. Um, these ones are still young, so they don't have um, color on yet, but as, a, um, as they keep growing, uh, they will eventually turn into different colors. So um, you have to fertilize them. Um, every time you water them uh, so that way uh, they do push their color faster. Um, they also need a certain amount of uh, dark in uh, in the evenings to be able to turn in uh, to whatever color they're going to be. Um, there is hundreds of different colors they could be. Uh, the most common are like red and white and um, like a mix between red and white. Um, they are tropical plants um, grown that are native to uh, Native America, uh, to um, Mexico, native to Mexico. Um, so when you look at your plants, you need to look for leaves that are uh, looking dead. Uh, this one has brown on it. And so when you see them, you have to pull those off so that way uh, the plant doesn't um, keep using its energy to work uh, to help grow a dead leaf. So you just all you do is you just pull them off and then you can get rid of them and throw them in the trash. Um, these other ones don't look like they have any on. So the class learns to uh, the class that grows these learns to um, how to take care of them, uh, and then we sell them uh, once they turn their colors, and um, to be able to buy more next year. Um, so each day the class goes out and looks at their plants and makes sure uh, that they are watered and. Like I said earlier, that every time they water them, they have to add fertilizer, uh, so that way they do change colors um, once they get big enough. Um, they also, like like I demonstrated, they they dead leaf uh, or dead head, uh, pull off the dead leaves, so that way the plants can continue to grow. Um, 
uh, some troubles we have with our class is that the students overwater the plants and the plants start to die. Uh, the students always are like, what, what did I do wrong? And if you pull the plant out of the pot, you can see that all the roots uh, look brown and dead. Um, that is because they watered them too much and um, the roots started to rot. Uh, usually when you would pull it out of the pot, you could see uh, white, healthy looking roots um, all throughout the soil. Um, uh, now we're going to go back to Abby uh, to close, close us out. All right, so that was a lot of information, but we hope you learned so much about the plant science program here at Garden Spot. I'm going to bring it over to my other FFA advisor, Mrs. Rank, to talk a little bit more about that. All right, hi everyone. Thank you so much for allowing myself, Mrs. Pearson, and our FFA officers and members to be a part of the webinar here today. Um, before I talk a little bit more about plant science, I just want to share with you who uh, was talking to you about plant science and you've seen them on screen, but I get to brag on them a little bit. So the first one was Andrew um, and Andrew serves as our vice president and Andrew does um, his outside agriculture product or project um, when growing his own vegetables and he's an entrepreneur and he has a roadside stand and that connects to his career goals because Andrew would like to own and operate a greenhouse in this area. So Andrew is very passionate about uh, plants and the environment and he actually had the opportunity to take home our five tower gardens this past summer and uh, he grew different vegetable products in those tower gardens and was able to market and sell them in a different way at his roadside stand. Uh, you also then have Ali Zimmerman. Ali Zimmerman had uh, serves as our secretary and she has a, a very immense uh, agricultural background. Uh, she shadowed in floriculture at a local business. Uh, she's taken our plant science class and her mom actually has a floriculture background too. So I think it runs a little bit in her genes. So again, another person that is just really passionate about plants. Lastly was Cheyenne and Cheyenne serves as our chaplain and she actually started her own uh, succulent business. So she was showing you how she propagates and she actually designs, she's very creative. She designs her own succulent gardens and then she actually sells them in the local community as well. So all of them have an immense uh, plant science background as well as an entrepreneurship mindset. Uh, those three students did a great job of explaining a lot of the components to our plant science program. Uh, we're really fortunate to be able to have a large greenhouse that we can run year round from going from poinsettias to a plant sale and then running our hydroponic systems uh, all eight months that we were in school. We're really fortunate to be able to do that. And we even have a new component to the program, which we call Spartan Ponics. So it's a little bit of play on words with the word hydroponics. And Spartan Ponics is a business that we're able to uh, sell our produce that we grow to our local community, specifically our school community. And we're fortunate, uh, we started this last January, Andrew and Cheyenne were part of the startup of this business. And who you saw teaching about rabbits, Three Buck is actually interning and managing all of our hydroponics. You actually see, oh, other side, you can see in the background we have our last hydroponics here that still needs to get started for the year. Um, so you can kind of see what it looks like before the lights are glowing and the plants are growing and the water's pumped. Uh, you can see what that looks like in its startup form. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for allowing us to be here today. I uh, hope you learned something. Uh, just checking the chat here to see if we have any questions. I'm not seeing any, so I'm going to pass it back to Abby, uh, serving as our president for this year. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mrs. Rank. So obviously, she was talking about our plant science um, that we have here at Garden Spot, as well as our rabbit animal shed that we have outside, which was talked about by Ms. Pearson. But one of the other highlights of our program here is our FFA. So FFA is one of my favorite things ever. I've been in FFA since I was in ninth grade and I've loved it ever since. Um, most programs are ninth through 12th, but some schools do offer it in seventh and eighth grade as well. It is a national organization that talks all about agriculture. There's a lot of leadership opportunities that you can be involved in. I know a lot of you are in 4-H or have heard about that. 
but FFA is just as cool. So FFA is usually school-based and you get to go on lots of cool trips. I've been all over because of this organization and I love it a lot. Um, one of the ways you can stay up to date with our FFA journeys and ag program here, this is our Instagram, oh, our is Instagram handle. You can follow us at GSHS underscore ag to see what we're keeping up with during the school year. Um, do we have any other questions about what we learned today or FFA, anything about our officers? Please drop them in the chat. We would love to talk to you guys and see what you're up to. All right, I'm not seeing any, so I'm gonna bring my other officers on just for a final farewell. So everybody come out here. See everybody. Everybody squish. We'd like to say thank you one more time for tuning, tuning in today and being a part of our FFA program. We can't wait to hear from you guys soon. We hope you learned so much today. Bye. Bye.